In this video lesson, we're going to look at finding the surface area and volume for composite objects. Composite is a word that means made up of different parts. So a composite object is made up of different similar shapes. In this first shape, we have a pyramid and a rectangular prism. In the second shape, we have a hemisphere and a cylinder. Let's start then with this first example from page 56 of your textbook. Our job is to determine the volume of this composite object. In terms of the volume, we have our cylinder plus our hemisphere. To find the volume, we're going to add together the volumes of those two objects. And this question actually becomes pretty straightforward because we can type this entire expression into our calculator as one string of calculations. If it makes you feel more comfortable, you can find it as two separate pieces first and then perform the addition. Why don't you hit pause and try doing the calculation now? If you're someone who feels more comfortable taking a look at the volume as two separate pieces, we have our volume of our cylinder and our volume of our hemisphere shown. When we add these together, we're going to see a total volume of 44,786.5. And don't forget how important it is to include units. Since this is a volume, we're looking at cubic units, and our units were measured in centimeters, so centimeters cubed. This is a style of question that doesn't get easier without practice. So too many examples would be overwhelming, but let's look at one more. In this example, we're discussing a tool shed. And the question tells us that we have a rectangular prism combined with a triangular prism for the roof. When we're asked to find the surface area of the tool shed to the nearest square foot. You'll notice that this question already provides us with the answer that we're looking for. And it's worth noting that this answer printed in our textbook on page 58 does not include the bottom of the tool shed. If something like this was going to be a quiz, test, or exam question, we'd be really clear about this. So just as a reminder while we work through the example, we're going to write down now that this tool shed will not have a bottom included in the surface area. So let's take a look at our game plan. To begin with, we're going to have two rectangles that represent the sides of this tool shed. These rectangles will be 6 feet wide and 5 feet tall. We can find their total area now. Okay, that's pretty easy. So let's see, if we talk about the sides, let's talk about the two rectangles that make up the ends of the tool shed. These rectangles are 4 feet wide. Hmm, I don't see a dimension mark there, but I notice that the 5 feet indicated here is also going to be the height for this piece. So let's fill that 5 in and we can easily figure out what the area 4 feet multiplied by 5 feet is. Don't forget, if you feel like this explanation is moving too quickly, you can always hit pause to give yourself more time to copy the example down. When you're ready, let's move on to talk about the next part. The next piece of our tool shed that we should consider will be the two triangular ends that belong to the roof. Let's label those as two triangles for the roof. Now looking at this, the four feet length will carry up to the top of the rectangle. So this total length is also four feet for the base of the triangle. And I can see that my triangles are three feet tall. And we know how to use a base and a height of a triangle to find their areas. All right, two groups of base multiplied by height divided by two, we're doing beautifully. Since this question is set up to not consider the bottom of the tool shed, we only have one last piece to think about. And that last piece will be the rectangular portions of the roof. There are two rectangle portions of the roof. Taking a look at our diagram, this six feet edge of the rectangle will carry up 
so that we have a six foot edge up top. Hmm, this is a little bit trickier though. The height of these rectangles isn't given to us. We can see some indication in the diagram that there's a right angle triangle though, which might help us out. And notice that the base of this right angle triangle have two marks related to our four foot length. Each of these pieces is exactly the same length, so we've cut the four feet in half, and each portion will be two feet. Can you see our strategy? We're going to use our Pythagorean theorem. Let's call that unknown length of the rectangle, which matches up to the hypotenuse of the triangle, x, the ever popular variable. And let's use our Pythagorean theorem to solve for the length of x. Just like you've seen me do in class, I'm going to represent this length as the square root of 13, rather than worrying about changing it into a decimal number. Now let's take a look at finding the areas of, of those two rectangular pieces of the roof. We have two rectangles that are each six units wide and root 13 units tall. So all together, those two rectangles give us a surface area of 43.27 squared feet. To find the total surface area of the tool shed now, we're going to take each of the square feet portions that we found relating to the different parts of the tool shed and add them together. 60 squared feet, adding 12 squared feet, adding 43.27 squared feet. When we take a look at all these pieces together, we can find the total surface area. And remembering that the question asks us to round to the nearest square foot, we find this final answer that the surface area is approximately 155 feet squared. And from here, ladies and gentlemen, the best thing that you can do to help yourself out is to practice. But in the meantime, as a little treat for making sure to complete your homework and watch the video lesson, here's a heads up. If you draw a bunny, that's right, a bunny rabbit, anywhere on your next quiz, I'll give you a bonus point. But don't tell people about this. If there are more bunny rabbits on quizzes than views for the YouTube video, deals off. Good luck with your practice, and feel free to stop in for extra help anytime.